right, y'all. It's January 5th, 2022. And uh, I got COVID over Christmas. Uh, wife and I went with the family up north to Felton. Drug my trailer all the way up there on Christmas day and had Christmas night and Sunday that I got to enjoy and then um, didn't get to do anything past Sunday. I got sick with COVID, my dad got sick and I basically laid in my trailer for uh, the whole time until we came home on Saturday. And I've just been down and out. I feel like I've mostly recovered from it, but I still feel weird. I just randomly will get nauseous. I can't smell or taste anything. But uh, with all that, I tried not to sleep. I worked last night, tried not to sleep all day, got up, got out here, got uh, my trailer put away, my yard cleaned up, and I've been working on the Falcon. So, um, I'm a creature of music and like music, so that's what keeps me going. But what I did is I took these, if anybody that's worked on old Fords, you know there's like a cone that comes out here. Or a, it's got the bump stop on it for the factory stuff. Took those out, took the fenders off, and got my chalk towers marked where I'm going to cut them. Where the yellow lines are um yeah everybody's been giving me crap about keeping those but uh they'll see come race week time why they're in there uh, anything forward from this potentially could go away we'll just see what happens after the cage is in this car and the bars come into the engine compartment we'll see what we do so i didn't get any of it of the stuff filmed of me marking it but basically i just drilled some holes and pulled some string lines to kind of get the the gist of what I was gonna do. Now, I was gonna have the neighbor, he's got a plasma cutter, um, thought about having him do it or decided to have him do it with the plasma cutter, but I may try the death wheel here and just see where I get. And if uh, I can't get to the backside because it's pretty tight, then I'll have uh, my neighbor cut out with the plasma cutter, but I think I'm gonna get the death wheel and get going. I'll just see what happens here. All right, well, here goes nothing. <laughs> That ain't too bad. Don't mind my old man glasses. I got them from my grandpa. But uh, I think what I'm gonna do is take the strut nut off the top of the strut and let the control arms uh, fall down so that there's no weight uh, on the strut towers right now. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, I got the struts out. Just jack the control arm up, take the top nuts off. And that's that. Well, I guess I'll continue cutting. All right, I got as much as I can get with the death wheel. Now I'm gonna try the sawzall and see if I can get the rest of the stuff that way. Okay, you 
All right, so it's the next day, uh, January 6th, and I got uh, one of these uh, shock towers cut, and I couldn't get all the spot welds, so I'm gonna have to pull the K-member down, and I guess why I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go get the same powder coated. <clears throat> why not? So, let me show you here real quick. So, I'm able to get some of these off, but there's the ones in here I can't get to because of the, the motor stand there, the engine engine mount stand. So I'm just gonna pull the K-member out, take it to get powder coated, and I'm gonna have to press these ball joints out so that they can powder coat the control arms too. And then um, I need to mark these bad boys as well. So for all that, I'll probably put you on a time lapse. And um, if you followed Matt's stuff you know that these came members weld to the to the car they don't bolt like an aje so on this pad right here i'm going to drill a couple of locating holes just so i know it goes exactly right where it was when he installed it and then when i put it back in the car i'll be able to have those two holes as reference and then after the car sandblasted and we get paint on it and all that then i can put it back in and i can weld it um so that it's, that's a done deal on its end and it won't need to come out unless I wanna take it out. So I'll put you on time lapse and get this cranking. These little tacks, I'm gonna cut off. Then I can pull the bolts out of the back and she's out. Here she goes. Son of a bitch. All right, got the K-member out of the Falcon, got the control arms apart, got the ball joints pressed out. Um, and then I got the call it the knuckles i got all the stuff off of those the the hub is off and all that so we're gonna get this stuff out to the powder coater hopefully that doesn't take too long and then uh we'll go back home and probably grab some of the metal and run over to the metal supply place that way we can get some metal to fill in the shock towers all right, you guys, so I took the K-member to, to the powder coater, got that dropped off, I didn't film it. And then I uh, went and got a new um, spot weld cutter. The other one I was using was China, and it did a few holes, but then it broke. So I went to the local uh, paint store here in my town, and this is what they had. I got uh, extra cutters and then 
this is the actual cutter far superior to the Chinese one that I was using and I didn't film it but uh, went ahead and undid the spot welds there and I uh, did some over here with the new one the new one cuts way way better and way faster almost too fast uh, that hole and that hole I just went right through like it just gnaws through that so I'll fill those with weld and I'm gonna fill these with weld and then I'll flatten this flatten this back out got the car up on the lift and I'm gonna just kind of clean up underneath here a little bit and then I'm gonna take I cut these off already this is where the factory strut rod went so I'm gonna take my spot weld cutter to those this is where the um, cross or the sway bar went I'm gonna take that off too over here as well um, and I'll probably demonstrate how how good that freaking spot weld cutter cuts way better than the Chinese stuff but uh, it was pricey. It was 70 bucks for that cutter and the three bits. So, um, but sometimes you got to spend money and so you're not just wasting your time pushing on that uh, Chinese garbage to work. It's money better spent that way, I guess. And time, time is what's important to me anymore. So I'll probably put you guys on a time lapse for the rest of this stuff. And, uh, it's just tough because I love listening to music. It's what kind of keeps me going. And when I'm listening to music, I can't record. I use my phone, so. All right, so what I do, um, instead of using like a punch, I'll use a little drill bit and I'll drill a little pilot hole and then that helps the arbor or whatever you want to call it, the cutter. It helps it not wobble around. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I'll just do these three real quick. That's about it. Just enough so that that thing don't wobble around. And then obviously here you can see where the spot welds are, but on some of the places where I can, I gotta take the wire wheel and wire wheel all that crud off just so I can see where it's at. And then just, this deal goes in here. Maybe a little more. The goal is to go through the one piece of metal and not the other. that off all right so I'll take my flat blade so we know that one's got to get cut more and that one's got to get cut more
Bingo. Man, I'm dirty. Okay, so I got everything, put you on time lapse. You can see kind of how the process was going. Uh, now let me show you what we got. So now that we got, you know, the sway bar and the strut mounts, all that stuff off. Now I'm gonna come with a, just a flat disc and get all these things flat. And then I'll probably, I mean, this car's gonna get sandblasted, but I'll probably take my uh, Eastwood drum wheel thing that I got and just kind of clean up right here on the frame. But I gotta clean up all that. I mean, they did not want those coming off. So you can see like I've ground down, I need to do these, but I ground this down. So tomorrow I'll get the welder out and I'll just put a little weld in there and then grind it all flat. So it looks like it was never, never like that. All right, y'all, late start for me today, actually in the shop. I've been up early and went and got my hair cut, went and got some rollers for the ranch so I can get that thing out of here. And then went to Home Depot. I had to get a laser. Um, once I got my shock towers cut and I tried to put some some metal in there just to see how flat it was. For whatever reason, the straight line I thought I had wasn't so straight, so. I just picked up this, I dropped it and now it doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna work. But I got this little laser here and I was then able to, um, you know, check how straight my lines are with this. And I got them straight, so now I'm gonna make templates for both these holes before I um, cut it out of the regular wood, uh, metal. The metal is 14 gauge and it's kind of thick. I thought I was gonna be able to bend it um, where I've got the little jog in the shock tower, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, 14 gauge is pretty thick. So what I might do is just make a template that goes up to that bend and then I'll put a piece of metal in that bend and I'll just weld it by the time it's welded and grinded and body work, ain't gonna matter anyways. So, put you on a time lapse and I'm gonna work. <laughs> So I got I gotta cut one more template but I got the templates cut and I've got everything cleaned up over here so let me show you what we got so I got all that stuff cleaned and I think I'm just gonna MIG weld this in I'm not good enough to take it and uh, mild steel is kind of hard to take so I got this as clean as I can get it and I just need to cut the top piece for right here but I'll get that cut and then I'll come back when I start to tack this in all right, I got everything cleaned up. Now I'm just gonna put some tacks in and get the stuff tacked in.
tack that in. So you were on a time lapse and I got the shock tower covers, whatever you want to call them. I got those all tacked in and I think I'm just going to leave them tacked in until I get the K member back. Uh, it's getting powder coated, obviously you already know that. Get the K member back and then I want to get the engine set in. So I got uh, turbo headers, flow tech. And this deal is 29 inches wide, so I'm gonna have to cut the frame somewhere over here, but I won't know until I get this set in here. And so I'm gonna wait until that happens and I can get it set in here, then I can, I think Matt had to cut from like here forward and I may do the same thing. Make sure I got some room for those headers. So that'll do it for this video. I'll catch you guys on the next one.